back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, The Lockup, <clears throat> Episode 4. As always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams, joined by my co-host. Ate too much buttered popcorn, Jr. Yeah, that'll do you, man. It'll give you the Rhea. Oh, I don't got the Rhea. I just oh, got give the, it time. I got give the it time. Cramps. Especially go out and have some spicy food later. Nah, I'm straight. It'll be fucking at the throne of Montezuma. I don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing? So, this is The Lockup, ladies and gentlemen, our wrestling podcast. This week, we're going to devote most of our time, if not all, to talking about WWE Extreme Rules. Which just uh, happened last weekend? Last, last Sunday, weekend, Sunday. yeah. Last Sunday. Yeah. Um, I was actually in attendance for that. I got tickets with... Uh, so, how, how was it? I See, I told you last time we recorded, we talked about how you weren't going to be here, but you were going to be there. And I said there would be a CM Punk chat. You're like, yeah, of course there was. Yeah. It's Chicago. Tons of CM Punk chants. Chicago can't help but bust out the CM Punk chants. And, you know, it was to the point where it was annoying. Like, all right, just shut up. The guy's been gone over a year. You're you're sounding like idiots. Yeah. I thought it was pretty funny. While we're waiting in line to get into the Allstate, um, there's a fan walking up to go take his place in line, and he's dressed like CM Punk. And I don't mean like a t-shirt. I mean, the guy had the CM Punk sweater, had the hair slicked back, and then he had the shorts. He had, like, the wrestling trunks. Yeah. And the boots and everything. And it was cold that day. And this kid looked at him. Dude, this kid couldn't have been more than, like, eight, nine years old. He looked at him. He's like, why are you dressed like CM Punk? And he's like, because CM Punk's awesome. He's like, you know, CM Punk's been gone for a year. You're an idiot. It's cold outside. <laughs> dude, everybody in the line just cracked up. And this kid that was dressed like Punk was just like, okay. And then, like, walked to the back of the line. I was just like, wow. It was just. See, that's awesome when a kid's even got to tell an adult when it's time to let go. Yeah. Um, it was cool. Had some really good seats. Sat uh, section 113, row AA. So for those that are not familiar with the Allstate Arena, it's basically front row um, right after floor seats. The floor seats are provided by uh, the WWE themselves. Uh-huh. And uh, so basically front row for Allstate. So. So I'm distracting my co-host here because we're – Talking about this, but we're watching the uh, Lucha Underground Trios match. That was fucking awesome, yeah, man. I saw that. You saw that? Hey, the dude, before you rewound Okay, I, I had that. I wasn't sure if you were paying attention. I'm paying attention. That dive, dude. That was cool. That, that was the shit. It's one of the coolest things I've seen in wrestling lately. Wow. Excellent Trios match out of there. Check them out on demand. YouTube it. Trios Championship, Lucha Underground. Awesome. So anyways. So you were back behind the Spanish announce table. I was like looking yeah, for you up in the much. corner. I, I never saw you once. Um, if you watch it... uh. There's a lot of scenes, actually, or I shouldn't say scenes, but camera angles where I come out. There's a row of uh, white stairs, and there's nobody sitting behind me. So because of that, I was able to stand up a lot and just kind of, like, do, like, you guys can't see me, but do this at the camera, like, right. wave my arms back and too. forth. And then at one point, I had my Black Comics Remix t-shirt on. Of course you because did. I had, well, it was the weekend of C2E2. Yeah, well, I so, mean, come on, you're, that's... Like, I'm sitting there doing this, like, promoting the shirt and stuff like that, but um, it was cool. You didn't bring a sign. I do. I've only taken a sign once, and the sign said, read my sign. <laughs> yep. Never took another you sign. You lazy bum. Here, here's why I won't take a sign unless I'm sitting in the front row. As a, a fan myself, I hate when people in front of me hold up the signs because I can't see anything. And I wouldn't want to do that to the people behind me. Right. No, that's understandable. You know? Um, another positive note, dude, I finally got the Bella Pops. Yeah? Yeah, the pop vinyls. Yeah? They were WWE exclusives, and they were selling them in there. Now, the entire Allstate Arena only had two tables that were selling merchandise inside, and they had a trailer on the outside. Trailer didn't have nothing but just some, you know, just a few t-shirts here and there. But when you go in, I walked in line, and I, I looked, and I seen the pops, and I was like, I got to get those pops. So I stood in line for about 25 minutes while my buddy was getting the food. I get to the front. They didn't have any more. They sold them out while I was in line. Really? Yeah. So I go around to the other side of the building, and I, I see the pops. And there's this kid, maybe like 16. Dude, he bought three cases of Bella Pops. There's three per case. So he bought nine of them at 25 bucks a pop. No tax. For so I'm like, the, 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 it was a, the pop vinyl toys. The were they ones. together in a pack? Yeah, it's a two-pack. Oh, okay, okay. So he bought nine of those. Wow. There's three to a case. And I looked at him, and I was like, dude, can you sell me one? I'll give you the 25. I just, I don't want to stand in this long line, you know? 
And he's like, sorry, dude, these are all for my friends. I'm sure because you have eight other friends who all collect pops. What are the odds of that? Yeah, that's... I mean, you and a lot of the other guys that hang out with, we all have a lot in common, comic books. But hardly any of us all collect the same thing. Right. You know? Yeah, that's So ridiculous. I was like, whatever. So I stood in the line for about another 25 minutes. When I got there, they they find, they find still had the Bellas. So I asked the lady, I was like, that's all I want. She's like, if I would have known this was all you want, I would have just had you cut in front of everybody. <laughs> like, well, oh well. So I go, I take my seat, show starts. Um, the first match was, uh, the pre-show match. It was Neville versus Wade Barrett. That was a damn good match, especially in person. Man, you know, out of all the guys that have come up from NXT, they are handling him so well. Yeah. And even though he's not winning all his matches, he's going out there and putting on just, he's, he has a following. I mean, already from NXT, but the, the main WWE crowd that probably doesn't watch NXT Dude, that guy's just impresses, man. Even Melissa was impressed. She's like, damn, look at that guy. Yeah. Does amazing stuff, Neville. So that match was great, you know. Um, I believe Neville went over in that match, if I'm correct. Um, but the first main match for the pay-per-view was uh, Dean Ambrose versus Luke Harper in a Chicago street fight. Now, let me say this about street fights. I don't care where they are. I mean, they hype Chicago street fights. I guess they're supposed to be like this big thing. Mm -hmm. um, but any street fight in general is nothing like what it used to be back in the old school days of WWE. Not at all. Not at all. Back then, they would fight in the crowd. They would actually fight in the streets. They'd fight, you know. They'd be they, showing them brawling through the back. They'd be all everything. over the place. Everything. They hardly ever do that anymore. What they did now was um, they fought ringside. They fought in the ring. They fought a little bit in the back. But then they get in a truck and just drive away. A la WrestleMania 10, Gold Dust versus Roddy Piper for the IC strap. Right, right. It's like, what? So, you know, that match goes away. And uh, you really don't know who won. Because, you know, they drove off. Whatever. Um, so, next match you have was uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Sheamus in a Kiss Me Arse match. Um, very brutal fight. I liked it. Um, it was a good match, man. The crowd popped hard for Ziggler. I mean, it's always different when you... When you uh, Watch something on TV versus when you're there in person. The mm -hmm. crowds are obviously very different. Right. And then WWE sometimes enhances the crowd cheers or dehances. That's not even a word, but decreases, I guess. Right. Um, they popped hard for both of them. Believe it or not, even Sheamus got a great pop. Um, they came out. They put on one hell of a fight. Um, obviously, you were expecting uh, Sheamus to, to do the deeds and kiss uh, well, his ass. Well, you kind of knew that Sheamus wasn't going to. Yeah, yeah. But you, I mean, you expect him to, but you knew he wasn't going to. Yeah, we. You know, I just realized we're not really going through our picks for this. We're just. You're just I didn't honestly. I didn't have picks. No, you didn't pick. No. I kind of felt I wanted Dolph Ziggler to win, but I kind of knew that Sheamus wasn't going to kiss the ass. I'll be honest. I hadn't watched Raw since WrestleMania, so really? I like I just read the card and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, like I just I haven't had time. So you're not aware that they're still giving Cameron a push. Who? Cameron. Oh, the Funkadactyl? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Well, obviously, just, I saw the match. That effing terrible wrestler. I saw uh, I saw that. But you know what? She, she's not bad. I think she's still too green. And it, I think the only reason she's getting the push is obviously because Paige ain't around right now. Yeah, um, out of an injury, huh? She's filming something. You think so? No, she's filming something. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Ziggler versus Sheamus in a Kiss Me Arse match where uh, Sheamus lost. He was supposed to kiss uh, Ziggler's backside. But then he made Dolph kiss his. Yep. Um, besides that, after, or I should say after that though, um, we have tag team championship match, the New Day versus Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. The shocking match of the night. Oh, I, I would agree. Which I'm going to tell you right now, those guys just wrestled again, uh, for a rematch on SmackDown this past week. Phenomenal match, dude. You know, I was thinking about that. I was talking to my buddy on the way back from Allstate. What if WWE... Was giving us a swerve the whole time with the new day. We as internet wrestling fans don't think the WWE is capable of doing stuff like that anymore. But here's my theory: when the new day, before they were actually called the new day, and they first we first heard rumors of them working together at live events as a heel team, supposed to be the new Nation of Domination. Remember uh -huh. that? Yeah, totally. What yeah, if, when they were wearing the suits. Yeah. What if they they were testing at the live shows? How they would go over as a as a heel faction and says, you know what? We're gonna make the crowd 
hate them organically. So we're going to make them such obnoxious faces that you have no choice but to hate these guys. That's a brilliant strategy because it worked. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because who, who in their right mind would sit there and they were like, you know, cheering for the new day when they came on? You yeah. either heard crickets or you just, that was the bathroom break. Like nothing, not to take away anything suck. from the three of them. Ooh, they sucks. Ooh, they sucks. That's you know, chant. but it's like nothing to take away from them as athletes because they're all great. Yeah. But I mean, just storyline, they're not even storyline, but character wise, I think that's what WWE did. They saw, you know what, we're going to force them, they're going to hate them, and that's what we want. We'll let them be heels organically. And they, uh, I, go ahead. They need to get, uh, oh, damn, I forgot his name now. The All one, right. the, he's in New Day. Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods. They need to, like, that guy needs to have matches. Yeah. That guy was a hell of a wrestler in NXT, doing nothing. He's like an over. Well, he's, like, always injured. He's like a Every valet. Is around. that what it is? Every time you turn around, he's got a cast on his leg, and then when he doesn't, he's just not scheduled. But I think it's one of those situations where, I mean, if, if, if I'm wrong, correct me, where the three men have the tag belts, so any three of them could, or any two of the three can defend them. I don't know how true that is, because up to this point, it has always been Kofi and Big E. Yeah. Even though Xavier Woods will be seen time to time sporting those belts. Yeah. Which also, are they trying to, like... Make them such heels that they're pushing primetime players to be faces to go against them because time prime, they're the primetime players still cutting great promos, haven't been seen very true in an actual match. I have no idea. Um, I, I also am kind of amazed at how organically, like, they threw Tyson Kidd and Cesaro together, and I really didn't think they would, but they have gelled into a great tag team. Like, it's one of those mixed match tag teams where, like, you're like, this is retarded, this will never work. The guys work great together, man. Great. Mm -hmm. And like I said, they've had good matches against New Day since they dropped the titles, which I'm still amazed at. So, going from there, as the New Day was celebrating their title victory, uh, the SUV from earlier pulls up and out jump or out falls Luke Harper, and Dean Ambrose is coming back with him. And you got to wonder, okay, so you guys are just hanging out in the car the whole time? You know? They're smoking weed. You know? Something. Cruising around the city. But uh, Dean Ambrose comes out with the win. His first pay-per-view win since defending, successfully defending his United States Championship when he was part of the Shield. Wow. Well, yeah, because he lost that U.S. Championship on a pay-per-view. That was the match before that where he successfully defended it was his last pay-per-view win. Wow. Yeah, so that shows you how long it's been. So the streak is That's broken. Good for him, man. He needs, he needs to, you know, I really... I keep saying this, but Cena, like, just needs to go. Speaking of Cena, he was <coughs> the last match. Rusev versus <clears throat> Cena in a United States Championship Russian chain match. Um, That was probably the least entertaining match. Yeah, I was just going to say. Um, I don't know why. Even even the live Well, I, I think you're like, getting kind of tired of seeing it. You yeah. know, how many times are we going to have to see John Cena versus Rusev? Well, they got another one coming up at Payback. In an I yeah, quit I know. Match. And don't get me wrong. Okay. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I remember when an I quit match meant you're leaving the company. Yeah. Not you just quit and gave, you know, you gave up. Yeah. You know? But. <clears throat> well, uh, maybe this is their opportunity to shelf John Cena momentarily. You know what I mean? Maybe this is their chance to be like, okay, we've kind of had enough of this guy. Let's sit him back for a while. Let him just do public, you know, he can hit the road and do speaking tours and do his, you know, make a wish stuff and. It's time to. It's either time to get him away from that belt or put another belt in action, because there's a lot of dudes, man, that could be going after that other belt. Uh, speaking of other belts, on, just on a really, really quick side note, I wonder what's going to happen with the IC title now that DD is shelved again. But we'll leave that for next week's combo. Um, so next match after Cena versus Rusev is the uh, Divas Championship: Naomi versus Nikki Bella. Um, wasn't a bad match. Crowd popped hard for the Bellas to win yeah, in his faces. Totally. Um, that was actually a very athletic match. I liked it. I, you know what? I, That's, I'm a stickler for fashion. I liked it. Naomi had the colored shoes. Yeah, they, they, they didn't work all that great. No, one was they, blue, one was they green. They worked better Monday Night Raw. When okay. she came out, they both were lighting up different colors like every time she stepped. Nice. So she had a mouth on, but I liked it. Very stylish. Uh, man, good match, dude. Two of, two of the best divas. In the locker room currently. There's not very many. Not the best, but two of the best. Right. I would still... Notch Natalia. my best at Natalia and yeah. Paige. 
Um, but they'd be the next two. I really felt like they were going to give Naomi the belt. I really feel like she's overdue. Yeah. It seems like everybody holds it. But then you owe, you owe it to Alicia Fox then. <laughs> Do you really? I it mean, just she's seems had like it they're before. just passing that belt to everybody so they can all say they've been Divas champion. Yeah. You know? Well, there's so few of them. Yeah. But, I mean, doesn't she kind of deserve it? This is what Nikki Bella's second time holding it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's overall a great match. Good match. Um, going on to the last man standing match, Roman Reigns versus the Big Show. You know what? It wasn't it wasn't a bad match. I'm tired of that 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 pair up. But the it was and I don't know how it came out on TV. Like I said, I haven't watched it. But being there, the atmosphere for that match was really really badass. You'd have thought it was a main event. Yeah. Yeah. It was really like everybody was really really into it. Like the crowd was definitely on Roman's side, and Big Show really did a good job of getting the heat from the Chicago crowd. You know. Well, he's an excellent heel, man. Uh, Big Show? I think Big Show's excellent. I mean, any role you put Big Show in, I think Big Show's going to excel. It's it's obviously he's past his prime, though. I mean, I think that's why this match is getting stale, because you've got this old guy. I mean, he's really part of the old brigade. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, how many times are we going to have to see these two guys fight each other? It's back to the same thing I said with Cena and Rusev. It's getting kind of stale. Well, for payback, up, they've already but... announced uh, it's it's Orton versus oh yeah Rollins yeah versus no totally. Reigns, so hopefully Big Show moves on from there. I w- you would hope. One would um, hope. Something else I was gonna say. Oh, so then Bo Dallas comes out. Yeah. Now, was this a planned match, or was this just like it wasn't even a match? We just... have to we have to fill some time. So get yeah, out there. And that's wrestle. what it felt like. It wasn't even a match because they just he came out, cut a promo, yeah, right back true. speared him, that's and set true. up the match for Raw. But here's my thing, though. When Bo Dallas came, like I said, once again, I don't know how it played out on TV. When Bo Dallas came out, he got one of the biggest pops. He got a face pop. Really? Everybody was, but then, like, he could, you see the look, but then he's just like, okay, I'm a heel. So he started instantly scathing into Chicago to make himself get the heat, you know, because everybody was for him. Like, at least everybody in my section. What do you think about that facial hair, man? It's weird. It is weird. (laughs) It's very weird. Do you know who he reminds me of when he smiles? You remember back in the, I want to say 2003 era, when uh, DDP was there and he was working with Christian, and he was like, Christian, you got to learn to smile, and Christian would do that fake smile. That's what he reminds me of. Uh, but now we go to our uh, World Heavyweight Championship match, the main event, Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins, with the RKO being banned from the match, and Kane is the gatekeeper. I was waiting for somebody to come out and be like, I am the key master. <laughs> um, but... Uh, you know what? I've ne- this is my first time watching a cage match in person, dude. It was awesome. Yeah. Seeing the cage in person was it's just it, it was just cool. It, it was really cool. Um, so that was a very brutal match. It was a very good match. Um, I guess once again, I only see it from one angle, and then I can watch it on the Titan Tron, but it's not the same. Um, very brutal match. Very good match. I like how Kane gave in and he choked Sam Rollins. That was cool. Like finally he's giving in, but he, at the at the last moment he realizes, you know what? I need a job, so he has Rollins do the cover. But you know what? I thought it was a great finish. Kane choke slams Orton, and uh, and then uh, or no, excuse me, Orton Orton hits. How did it go? I know Rollins finishes with an RKO. Yeah, Rollins finishes with an RKO. Orton Orton does something to Kane, and then when he turns around, that's when he gets RKO'd by Rollins, and I thought that was great. You know, um, I'm a little upset that they let it go though, because they said. Now, I, from what I remember going into the match, Orton was banned from using the RKO. Didn't say Rollins was. Just said Orton was banned. Well, from according to Raw. Yeah, and then I said, and the next night on Raw, they said, no, it was yeah, just banned. Yeah, the RKO was banned, yeah. Then why give the win to Rollins? You know, I just, well, I guess you boy. can't throw the match out on a table. He's the golden boy. Yeah. You know, you got to give it to the golden boy. I, I suppose you can't have a pay-per-view bad match with no winner. So... That's why, hey, you know what? Nobody pays for Raw, so we'll go ahead and just explain it on there. Yeah. I mean, other than that, like I said, I had a great time. Um, there was this dude in the crowd. Uh, he was sitting like two, three rows in front of us on the floor, just like Hollywood Hogan, a slim version. <laughs> but he had the belt, he had the NWO shirt, he had the beard, the glasses, the bandana. And every time he would walk by, we'd be like, too sweet. And we'd do the, the too sweet gesture. And yeah. he'd walk by and he'd too sweet us. That's awesome. So as we were leaving, we're like, dude, we need a photo. He was like, fucking love you guys. And we're like taking all these photos. So uh, it was pretty cool. Um, overall, great experience. They'll be back July 6th for Monday Night Raw. 
Uh, we haven't decided if we're going yet. Uh, we do, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, I have to say my biggest disappointment about this pay-per-view was the fact that when we recorded last, the last lockout, I had said that I was looking forward to the Miz versus Miz Dow for who gets the rights to the, the brand. And, and the it ended up on Raw. And it ended up on SmackDown. SmackDown. Oh, snap. Oh, you know what? Yeah, because I saw some of the last Raw, and it was um, Damian Sandow. Yeah. Coming out. I don't know what to do next. And blah, blah, blah. And still having the comedy gimmick as he's making fun of uh, Curtis Yeah, Axel. so it's, I feel like the crowd is so over on him, man. Like, they, the crowd wants him. And I feel like they just don't know what to do with him. I, I, you know what? I agree because I see that. Even, like, as a fan, as a fan, we sit here and we can take a, a wrestler. And we're like, you know what? They should do this with him. They should do that. Sandow is one that comes out. It's like, I really don't know what direction they should go in with him. Like, when he first came out back as Damian Sandow, he talked about how, you know, I came out here trying to be the savior of the masses, and you all told me how you felt about here. And then, you know, obviously I went through, everyone says I went through an identity crisis. And then he went through, like, you know, the... They showed the Magneto slide. Yeah. I thought that was great. Davy Crockett Sandow. Or Cro Davy Crockett Dow, whatever the hell they called him. Yeah. Vince McMahon Dow. But it seems like they don't know what to do with him. No, I agree. And it sucks, man, because he's had some good matches since he's come back as Damian Sandow. Yeah. The crowd loves him. Do good pop every time he comes out. But it just seems like, like he's that awkward, you know, like Peter's voice cracking the stage. Uh, that's a, a reference, you know, so. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it was a reference to Brady Bunch. I don't even watch that show, but it's it's just they don't seem to know what to do with him. But uh, all in all, man, it wasn't a bad pay-per-view. Um, hopefully they can keep it up with uh, paybacks next, right? Mm -hmm. Which it really sucks. Like, I, I'm, I'm my last thing I want to get across here before we cut for this week, really tired of John Cena. Really tired of John Cena's open challenge match when we already know the day after the fucking pay-per-view ends that he's going to defend it at the next pay-per-view. We knew that night. Oh, did we know that yeah, night? Yeah, because remember, after, oh, that's another thing, how the crowd, we want Lana, and she gets up and she waves. I don't know how organic that was because who knows if she, I, I would she have gotten up on the apron and waved had the crowd not started chanting for her? Because that's the only reason she got up there. We were chanting for her, you know? And supposedly that's what cost the man, or that's why uh, Rusev sent her in the back, and he sent her to McMahon's office or the authorities' office, you know. And, you know yeah. Support. And she yeah, said yeah. it at the pay per view. You know. Redonkulous. It's just you know I I know John Cena has his place, but you gotta you know push those younger guys, man. Stop pushing Rusev. Yeah. Why does he need to be pushed? Was he lost two matches now, and his WWE main roster career has lost two matches? Right. Terrible. Well, that's all we got for this week. Uh, you know? Yeah, we're keeping it nice and short this week. Yep. But uh, we'll have more next week. Oh, most definitely. Um, I want to talk next week, not just on the lockup, but on breaking the fourth wall. I want to talk about the C2E2 experience. Right. Maybe by then we'll be able to announce who uh, who the first spotlight is. We can talk a, lot, a little more about the spotlight. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean... Big things coming, just don't want to talk about them. Everything's in the works. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to be like, we're doing this, and then not do it. You yeah, know? it's better to do it and then. Like I mean, last year or was it the year before? We had that Mark Wade thing that was supposed to happen, and it just kind of dissolved into the ether. That you know, it didn't dissolve. It was just something we never followed up on. Was that so? That was our fault. Yeah. No. But who's to say it still can't? True that. You know. So. so it's another case of that we don't want to talk about it before it's etched in stone. Yeah. And we can be like, boom, next week, this is what's going to happen on Friday. Yeah. The first official. But uh, if uh, if our first official guest is who we're planning it to be, because I spoke with this person myself at C2E2. Well, let me, I know it's kind of weird because it's the lockup and it's not lockup related. It's right. more breaking the fourth wall related. But um, I spoke with a certain cre comic creator at C2E2 and uh, we had an interview scheduled Unfortunately, due to a family emergency, he had to cancel, but he said he would do one over the phone with us. Um, I'm not going to reveal who that creator is uh, until it's etched in stone, like Brian said. So, um, But we, I also kind of had a similar conversation with a wrestler, now that we're talking about lockup. Uh, again, I won't say who it is, because you know, it still might happen. Who knows? Um, I don't know if he was just egging me on. But... Right, if he was just being a nice guy, because he was right. in con mode. 
Right. So who knows? <laughs> see what I said there, con mode? Yeah, I see what you did. <laughs> nice. So that's uh, episode four of the lockup. Until then, uh, until next week, some more wrestling news. Go watch Age of Ultron if you haven't. Lucha um, Underground, Lucha Underground, Lucha Underground. Word. I can't express, like, if you are a WWE fan or a TNA fan and you're disappointed and you're dis Lucha Underground, man. The matches have, I have not been let down to watch it for over a month now. Lucha fucking Underground. Amazing stuff. Oh, yeah. El Rey, baby. Got to give the plug to El Rey. Nice. But, uh, so we'll see you back next week with all more lockup. I'm Big B. This is Junior. Later. Peace.